Hi guys, Sandra here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a different but an interesting video for both of us and nostalgic for me in making this video because for today's video I will finish painting this Strelitzia flower also known as Bird of Paradise that I started painting about 10 years ago when I attended an art high school. To be precise, I don't remember what year exactly I started this painting. I graduated from high school in 2012, but I could have made this one between 2010 and 2012, but it's easier to say that it's about 10 years ago. And I kept this painting all these years, among other flowers that you are seeing right now, that I painted during those years in high school. I don't know why I never finished this Strelitzia, but I kept all of them because these are my very first proper attempt to draw and paint botanical flowers, so I'm kind of attached to them. They are an important part and the beginning of my growth as an artist, and I actually really like these paintings that I made 10 years ago. And during those years in high school, it was also the first time I started using gouache. So these are also my very first proper paintings that I made with gouache, but also with other mediums. But I think this video is gonna be very interesting, especially for you guys, because I'm gonna share a comparison of my approach for drawing and painting flowers between now and 10 years ago. And since then, I improved and learned a lot as an artist, and I definitely have more knowledge now compared to 10 years ago. Like for instance, in terms of painting technique, these paintings that I made 10 years ago are definitely not bad and I did a great job, especially since at that time I was still new to using different art mediums. Well, I've always loved painting more than drawing, and I always enjoyed experimenting with different mediums, which I was quite good at it. But from these drawings, I can definitely see that the proportion of these flowers are quite wrong. <laughs> Some of these flowers are way too big compared to the size of the stem. I guess drawing in such a large scale didn't help getting the proportion right, but looking at these paintings, it definitely brings back memories and some of the advices that my teachers teached us for drawing and painting realistic flowers. So I'm gonna share some of these advices with you guys. But yeah, let's get started. I already went ahead and finished sketching this Relizia on my iPad to show you better the changes I'm gonna make and how I'm gonna finish this painting. The first thing that came to my mind seeing this drawing is that with my current approach, I would never start painting without sketching the overall drawing first, since this drawing doesn't look finished to me. I can't remember what I was thinking 10 years ago, but I'm pretty sure I was going to add some leaves in the background at some point. It doesn't apply to everyone, but for me, Having the drawing defined before painting, it gives me a general idea if the composition can work or not and it helps me to guide where my painting will go. Overall, my sketch of 10 years ago is definitely not bad, but looking at it now, I would change few things for sure. The major changes I would do is to add more value in these parts right here on the petals so that it doesn't look too flat. I did a decent job and maybe I was going to add more value and more contrast to begin with, but I would add even more contrast so that you can differentiate the petals at the front from the ones behind. And I'm also going to add more petals since this composition feels a bit empty to me if I leave it like this. Second major change is this purple part here, which I'm not really sure how to name it. In those classes when we drew and painted flowers, we used to have real flowers as reference to look at, which by the way real flowers are the best reference you can have for drawing and painting flowers because you can see up close all the details and analyze how a flower is structured by seeing the flower from different point of view. 
My teacher used to go to a flower shop every week to buy fresh flowers for us to draw, so I'm sure I was looking at the real flower while sketching and painting this Trelizia, but this purple part here is like I'm looking at it from the back point of view, which it doesn't make much sense compared to the point of view of how I painted this Trelizia. I mean, I'm sure that's just how that flower was to begin with, but since I don't have the real flower to look at right now for finishing this painting, I'm gonna change it completely and paint it in the same point of view on how I drew this Trelizia. So another thing that has changed after drawing flowers for all these years is that now I'm able to analyze and understand how flowers are structured and draw them in different perspective and point of view without too much problem. And third change, the way I drew the stem is too stiff and too straight while Strelitzia flowers have a quite straight stem, but I'm gonna paint it more curved and more natural looking. And this is something that a lot of my teachers used to tell me when I was at school that my drawings were too stiff. But it's understandable because I wasn't confident in my drawing skills at that time, so it reflected the way I was drawing. Right now I still lack in a lot of things in my drawing skills. After all, I always preferred painting more than drawing, so I've always been more confident in my painting skills. But after learning the fundamentals of drawing in general, I'm definitely more comfortable in my drawing skills and I improved a lot since 10 years ago, if that makes sense. Then there are a few additional minor changes I'm gonna do, but these are the most noticeable adjustments I'm gonna make, continuing from the initial sketch I made. But last but not least, I'm also going to add some leaves in the background so that the composition doesn't look empty. Being honest, I really like my painting strokes and how I started painting this Trelizia, so I hope to do a good job finishing this painting, but yeah, I'm excited to get started. For this painting I know I used Royal Talents Extra Fine Gouache because it was my first gouache set when I first tried gouache in high school, but for finishing this flower I thought to use the Himi Mia gouache that I bought and reviewed some months ago on my channel that I haven't used this palette since that video. <laughs> And if you're interested in an update after about 3 months, the top layer of the jelly cups have dried a little, but the paint inside is still fresh and moist, which is great. I will leave the link to my Himi Mia gouache review video in the description if you're interested to check it out after this video. But this is the perfect gouache set to use for this painting because after I published my review, some of you told me that the Himi Mia gouache was originally created for Chinese students for intensive and extensive gouache studies in art classes and since students use a lot of paint for practicing and this gouache set is very affordable, it's the perfect gouache set for students and for practice. And since this painting was a student project, after all, I find this set very fitting for today's video as I will also need a lot of paint to finish this painting without me worrying finishing my tubes of good quality gouache paint. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of ready-made gouache palette like the Himi Mia gouache because how easy they can get dirty, I do enjoy the quality of this gouache. I just have to be careful when scooping up the colors from the jelly cups for each color exchange to not dirty my colors and I worked with gouache like I usually do. But I'm not gonna lie, when I started painting I kind of struggled at the beginning because it's been 10 years since I haven't painted in such large scale. I wanted to place the painting on a kind of stand or easel to have this painting on a more upright position, which it would have been easier to paint, but I didn't have anything this big to place the painting. 
So I laid the painting on the table and finished this piece while standing on my feet. Because sitting down like I usually do, it wouldn't have been comfortable while painting. But even though I was standing up, I was comfortable painting this piece. But during this painting process, you're gonna see my head in a lot of frames because I kind of struggled filming this painting process where I had to place my camera quite far away and in a quite elevated point of view for the painting to be fully in the frame and I wasn't able to check very well the filming process so I just apologize for my head being in the frame a lot of times <laughs> but I hope the filming process still turned out okay you know, I usually paint on a maximum of A4 sides, which is easier for me to film as well. And talking about paper sides, a lot of my teachers wanted us to draw on a large scale, but to be honest, I don't remember why. Right now, I can only think that this way you don't focus on the detail, but you work on the general layout, which I understand it, but I don't know how I feel about drawing on a large scale right now. We should draw on the sides we are more comfortable and that works for us. At least for me, it's much easier to get the proportion right when I'm drawing on a smaller scale. So I don't blame myself for not getting the proportion right in the paintings I made 10 years ago. And for example, for me that I love to add many details in my art, that is also the main feature of my art style it's much harder to do so working on a large scale. But if you know other reasons why it's recommended to draw on a large scale and what are the benefits, definitely leave a comment down below. But at the same time, it was definitely fun painting on a large scale again. It feels rewarding seeing your finished painting on a large scale and it brought back a lot of memories but also for the paper I used, because this paper buckled so much while I was painting. <laughs> and that's because it's a very lightweight paper. I think it's about 200 grams, which is not the most suitable paper weight for gouache painting, but that's because me and my classmates didn't want to spend a lot of money in paper supplies. Since, you know, when you are a student, you use a lot of art materials, that aren't necessarily cheap, you know. So we used the cheapest paper we could find for all my art classes and for painting all these flowers I made in high school. But I remember my teachers recommending us to use a better quality paper and I understand the reason now because with a heavier weight paper that will absorb water and paint better, you will be able to lay down the paint much easier and nicer compared to when the paper starts to buckle and it doesn't stay flat and the paint might dry uneven. But I think when you are still a student and you are still in the learning process, it's okay to use cheap quality supplies you are bound to make mistakes, which is totally okay and part of your learning process, so it could be a waste to use good quality supplies. So once you learned the basic fundamentals of painting, then you can apply your knowledge and what you learned using better quality materials. The surface of this paper is also very smooth, which I prefer to use cold pressed paper. So I had to lay down the paint multiple times to get a nicely painted coat of paint. But at that time when I was in high school, I didn't even know the difference between hot press and cold press paper. Well, it didn't matter to me too much what kind of paper I was using. While right now that I have more knowledge when it comes to paper for painting, that I know what suits better my art style and the way I like to work, I definitely have a different and kind of wiser approach for paper for painting, if I can put it in this way. And by the way, I described the school I attended as high school because I was between 15 and 18 years old back then. But in Switzerland we have different kind of school, 
that you can go after middle school and before university. We also have apprenticeship where you work at a company and study at school together. And my school is actually described as a professional art school with different professions and courses you could follow that kind of different from regular high school because we used to make into practice our skills and not just study from books. And the profession I chose in that school was textile design, where I graduated as a textile designer. But it's just easier to call it high school. But anyway, while painting this piece, I remember some of the advices that my teachers used to tell us. One of the drawing and painting fundamental, if I can put it in this way, is that you're supposed to apply your strokes in the same orientation of the subject you are drawing. So for example, for the leaf behind the petals, you should apply your strokes following the orientation of the leaf and not contouring the shape and fill out the blank space with paint like I initially did. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but for those areas when there are two different objects overlapping with different orientation, I hope you get what I mean and I hope you can relate to me that it's not easy to fill the gaps with paint until the edges with only using one stroke direction. Not sure how to explain what I mean and I hope it makes sense, but to say if I was using acrylic, I would have painted the leaf before painting the petals on top so that it would have been easier for me to apply my paint strokes correctly, but since I'm using gouache and it's a water-based medium that can be reactivated, I wanted to preserve the brightness of the yellow and orange of the petals, so if I would have painted the petals on top of a green coat of paint, the paint would have all mixed up and the result would have turned out all muddy. But I was aware of what I was doing and it was just easier for me to fill in the gaps this way. So I corrected my paint strokes on the leaf by the end of this painting process. But I wanted to mention this because a bad habit of mine was leaving empty gaps right at the edges of two crossing objects because it was too difficult for me to paint those areas since I couldn't fill those gaps with strokes in random direction but I had to follow the orientation of the flowers and the leaf instead to paint them correctly. So since it was too difficult for me, I just left it blank. <laughs> oh my. I mean, I'm really not sure how to explain what I mean and I really hope it makes sense, but I'm gonna show you some examples of my other paintings for the gaps that I'm talking about. So I hope this way you get what I mean that simply leaves an incomplete look to the painting. But it's definitely a mistake where I learned from and it's something I don't do anymore. And another thing regarding the leaves I painted, since we are in the topic of paint strokes, I initially laid down my paint strokes in an upward direction for painting the leaf that it would have worked if I would have painted the leaf with only the central vein line which I liked the result, but I kind of wanted to add more veins, similar to the Strelitzia leaves. I actually tried to add them directly on the painting a couple of times with gouache, but I just didn't like it, so I repainted those areas and covered the veins I added. And sometimes in these occasions, with traditional medium, it's easier for me to add certain adjustments using other mediums because with gouache the paint can get mixed all up so you kind of have to plan everything beforehand when painting with gouache because gouache allows you to correct your mistakes and do certain adjustments and this is something I've always loved about gouache but you can't do unlimited changes without ruining the end result at some point. And well, I wasn't too sure how to paint the leaves to begin with at the beginning, so I just started painting and then once everything was laid down, then I was able to make the adjustments that I could make. So at this point I wanted to use oil pastels, like I used to do when I was in high school, 
to add the veins of the leaves and make additional adjustments on the painting to also add more texture and add that kind of artistic touch that oil pastel give that I really like but I'm not really able to do with all the gouache. I've always loved using different mediums together for my art because you can achieve different outcome than just when using only one medium. So I definitely felt like using oil pastels here as well to finishing this piece. So I took out my collection of crayons and pastels that I still kept all these years to show you what I have. But oh my god, I haven't used them since 10 years ago. In high school, I used these oil pastels from Van Gogh that are under the Talents brand. I believe the same brand of Royal Talents gouache, which I enjoyed using and I definitely used them a lot 10 years ago because I almost finished all the colors and <laughs> I want to apologize for the mess <laughs> because oh my god, my pastels are all so dirty. <laughs> Sorry about that. I definitely didn't plan this out very well. <laughs> oh my. But I enjoyed so much adding some oil pastel strokes on this painting. It was exactly how I used to do in high school and it was so much fun. And I actually have another video coming up after this one that will be about oil pastels that I'm very excited to share with you soon. And once it's out, I will leave the link to it in the description, depending on when you are watching this video. So definitely stay tuned for that. But anyway, overall the aim for this painting wasn't about achieving a perfect result. Of course, I was hoping to create a better result than 10 years ago, which I hope I did, because otherwise <laughs> it would look like I haven't improved at all since then but i certainly did because my current approach now is based on better and improved artistic knowledges but for me for this video it was more important to have fun during this process because i often overthink everything in the art i make sometimes i don't enjoy the process as much as i should because i'm too focused on creating something that I can be proud of and that it's worth to share with you guys. Which this is not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't often take the time to just paint without worrying about the end result. And even here at the beginning of this creating process for finishing this painting, I was trying to prove to myself that I can make better art than 10 years ago. Which I mean, is not definitely a bad thing to focus on and to think of and to prove. <laughs> but I was overthinking about my process. But once I took out the oil pastels, I started enjoying myself. So toward the end, I just wasn't thinking at all. And my hands moved by themselves. And I was able to finish this piece nicely as well, without making much effort. And dwelling on the process. So yeah, I'm really happy how I finished this painting. I don't know why but it really felt cool and rewarding. Maybe because I was painting on such a large scale but I'm not sure. I guess it's because oil pastels allowed me to paint more spontaneously without dwelling on the details like I do with gouache because you can't paint very well fine details with oil pastels to begin with. So I just don't even try <laughs> because it's not gonna work for me. Because for me at least, I can't be as precise and detailed as when I use gouache. But don't get me wrong, I love working on the details with gouache and for my art and it's never going to change but occasionally, I like to create art pieces more textured with more visible strokes of colors like when I use oil pastels. So yeah, I really had fun finishing this painting and I really hope you enjoyed watching this process along with me. And it was very interesting for me noticing some of the mistakes I used to do 
ten years ago, which means I learned from them and improved, which is awesome. And yeah, I hope it was interesting for you as well. Oh、uh, yeah, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.